you're like a majority of Americans, you're struggling paycheck to paycheck with the increase of gas bills, food bills, auto loan bills, rent payments, utilities, subscriptions, pretty much everything across the board at this point has seen a price increase due to the raise in inflation and the, the rise of inflation that we have actually seen. Now, auto loans are not exempt from this, guys. We have seen a $1.6 trillion auto loan deficit, which is what we're seeing as of 2023. And looking at quarter over quarter from Q2 to Q3, there was a $13 billion increase of the auto loans that people are taking. Now, this can be accounted to a couple different factors that we're gonna look at in today's video. Video. Number one, consumers are struggling, guys. When you look at the average price of a car just a couple years ago, average price of a car was around $35,000. Fast forward to September of 2023, the average car price was $48,000, guys. So it's crazy to see almost a $13,000 to $14,000 increase or price lift in just a matter of four years, according to the article. Um, it is kind of crazy. And the, not only coupled with the cost or the average price of vehicles, Interest rates have went up a lot, which means that the amount that you're gonna be paying for an auto loan as of today, even at not only a higher dollar amount, but now a much, much higher interest rate, meaning that most people are paying roughly for two cars around $1,500 to $2,000 a month, guys. Now, general rule of thumb says that your auto loan payment should not exceed 15% of your take-home income. Now, with that being said, guys, auto loan payments are running about $650, which means you're gonna have to make around $5,000 take home a month. Majority of us, including myself, do not make that by any means to afford where car prices are getting to. But what can you really do to mitigate this debt? This is where it is up to you guys. You have to take accountability to the debt that you have and also look at the payment options that you have. Number one, starting with the refinance of a car. Now, if you bought a car probably within the past 10 to 12 months, chances are that you can go through another financial institution. Some of those will match the rate that you have. They will offer you a better rate. They will offer you better terms. If you're struggling with auto loan payments, look to get a reduced payment. Not only that, as a majority of financial institutions will push your loan payment out 30 to 45 days. So if you're at the point where it might be a little bit of a struggle, um, looking at the refinance option might make difference, a big difference in the payment. In addition, a lot of places to really fix with your debt to income ratios or make the budgeting affordable. You can actually go out to a longer term, which of course might be a little bit of a higher interest rate, but overall looking at the cash flow is it will lower your monthly payment because you're extending the term of this. Now, borrower, borrowers will need typically a higher credit score, um, usually about a 650, 650 680 or higher um, to really make it worth it depending on what the rate was. Now, a lot of people, even the beginning of 2022, we had rates as low as 1.74. Right now, the rates are about six and a half, guys. So you have to be really conscious and run the numbers and make sure it's going to be worth it because you don't wanna give up that great rate for a much higher rate. However, if it is the monthly monthly payment that is really doing you in, where you're falling behind on a couple of different things, might leave you with little options, which again, we're gonna explore. Turning to hardship programs. Now, this is another one, guys. Majority of financial institutions, especially your credit unions, if there are issues um, looking at different due dates, looking at loan deferrals, looking at forbearance, um, looking at skip a pays, there are a lot of options if you're falling behind on your auto loan and really explore these options before. And I really um, take it with a grain of salt, guys. You have to explore the options before you're experiencing the hardship because essentially we don't want it to affect your credit score because as soon as you're you know, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days before um, being late on your auto loan payment, you have them calling, you have collections possibly involved, you have repossession possibly involved. You have to let people know much in, in much sooner than you think. So even if you're gonna say, hey, I could experience a hardship with my auto loan, making your financial institution aware, even if nothing happens or you're able to pay your payment like normal, it is really good kind of practice to give them a heads up to know exactly what is going on. Now, ultimately, if the car is too expensive, you can look to sell your car. Again, with prices of vehicles being very high right now, chances are if you're selling your used car, you're still gonna get a good price for it. This can give you the option to not only free up the monthly payment, 
Really analyze if you do need that car, if you're commuting, how much, how much you're really using for it. What alternative methods do you have? Um, are there smart rides? Are there Lyft? Is there Uber? Is it gonna be worth it again? If it's really the short term, is there um, public transportation? Can you drive a bus? Could you carpool with somebody else? A lot of options when you sell your car, or you could even be selling a much more expensive car to get a less expensive or a used vehicle. Again, that is gonna work within your in your budget and making sure that you're going to make that affordable. Now, of course, with this, guys, you have to make sure what you owe and if you're still going to be in a positive or negative equity situation for this, because I don't want you to sell a car that's valued at $20,000. You still owe 24,000, meaning you're still gonna be stuck with that $4,000 loan because it is upside down. You're gonna have to take either a personal loan, unsecured credit cards, whatever it may be to pay that loan off to officially sell that car. You don't wanna be upside down and you don't want the negative equity. Now, in addition, you can also talk to dealerships, guys. A lot of times dealerships will offer you some good terms. Even if you're trading in a car that you're gonna get a little bit of money on, they can get you in a car that is more affordable, that is more in your budget, more in the wheelhouse, depending on what you're looking for. Now, the ultimate one or the, the one that I want to avoid is voluntary and involuntary repossession. The voluntary means that you have your car and you are willing to surrender it with the keys, with the title to your lender. Now, this, of course, um, they take the vehicle and you really have to know how this works. So let's say, for instance, you give me your vehicle. You say, you know what? I can't make the payments. I want to turn this in. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to take the car. The car is going to go up to auction. Again, that same scenario, let's say you owe $20,000. During auction, I get $14,000 for that car. Financial institutions will come after you for the remaining $4,000 that you're short on that loan. And again, this can be very scary, guys, because if it goes to auction again, owing that $20,000 and they end up getting $8,000 because nobody else wants the vehicle that you used to have, you're gonna be $12,000 upside down and again, they are going to be coming after you for that money. Now, this could affect your credit. Um, you could have late charges. You could have late penalties. And the same falls with the repossession, guys. Repossession is going to be detrimental to your credit score if they have to come find the car, repossess the car. In addition to not only repossessing the car, there are also a lot of fees. There are a lot of fines. There is repossession fees. There can be a lot of things kind of tied on the back end. And again, this is going to affect your credit for a considerable amount of time if a vehicle is repossessed at that point. So a couple different options, guys. Like I was saying earlier, it seems like the price of cars is just getting astronomical. My personal opinion and my viewpoint, guys, is look for your price range. That is how I kind of price out people in the financial institution that I work at is when you're coming in, we kind of run through a budget, kind of run through a scenario, what payment are you comfortable with? Based on a payment, based on a term, this is how much you can borrow. So if a member comes in, says, hey, I can afford to pay 350 a month on an auto loan, based on the rate, based on the term, we can get your payment to 350. It might say, hey, you can get you know, 15,000, 18,000, 20,000, depending on what it is for the rate and the term that you can go shopping for, meaning either you're going to find a vehicle within the price range that you're looking for, or if you're finding a vehicle that is above that price range, you're gonna have to bring cash to the table to put down to again, stay in that price range. This is honestly probably one of the biggest things between the um, auto loans and the credit cards. I feel like it is really going to trap you in a financial nightmare forever. I see people that are buying 50, 60, 70, $100,000 vehicles that are making you know twelve to $1,500 payments on them every single month, which is kind of crazy because that is well above and beyond most people's mortgages just for an auto loan to drive. And a lot of people don't drive that much anymore, especially with remote work, things like that. There is not as much a demand for driving. So guys, that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, where your average car payment is and what rates you're seeing. And I'll catch you in the next video.